They say there are many Islamic movements nowadays. How do you know which one is Salafi? Well, ask them. They're real proud of it. Do you really want the answer to this one? You guys want the answer to this one? It's not our topic. Do you want the answer to this? You don't want to hear it, do you? You're not a selfie, are you? <laughs> okay. Actually, there are things that are called deviant groups, and then there are groups which are normal, but people try to turn it into something deviant. To be a follower of a particular jurisprudence, such as Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi, Hanbali, Jaffrey, like this, this According to Al-Azhar University, they ruled on these five and said that these are all matahab. These are matahab of learning how to make wudu, how to pray, things like that. And if somebody follows one or the other, that's fine. Because you don't have time to become a scholar, great. If you want to go further than that, you can. But the point here is, those are normal groups. You can also have groups that are, let's say, the Muslim youth, a soccer team or the Kuala Lumpur Muslim Ladies Association for helping the orphans these are all groups there's nothing wrong with that the deviance comes in when they try to tie whatever they're saying to Islam and claim that it's the only Islam there's where the deviance comes Islam is wide and it allows a lot it's not tolerance not like we said before, but it's out of Allah's compassion and His mercy that a lot of things didn't really come up at the time of the Prophet ﷺ so that you would just say definitely that guy is out of it, this guy is out of it. He didn't want us to do that. He talked about it and Allah talked about it. We are the Umatin Wasatin. Wasta is to be in the middle. We stay in the middle. We don't go to the extremes. There's no such thing as radical Islam because radical is out of Islam. Okay, now, having said that, having said that, and I'm talking about the words only, not the people, the words. There are very good people who call themselves Sufis. They're very good. But the word Sufi itself was not something that came from Prophet Muhammad. So you can be a good person without being a Sufi. Okay? And you can get to Allah without following a tariqah. Now I've heard some of them say you can't. Well now they're going to have to prove their point for me. We're going to get, leave, give them the chance to be a scientist and bring you proof. I mentioned that only one. There are many where people will say our group is the only group. Most of the people in the groups don't really have this attitude but there are extremists. And when somebody says, we are Salafi, first of all, I'm going to guess that he doesn't know the Arabic language. I'm going to guess he probably doesn't know. Or he said it so much, he forgot what it really means. Salaf means somebody who's dead and gone. These are your predecessors. So a guy stand there telling you, I'm dead. And they say, Salaf Asali. Righteous predecessor. Okay, I'm a dead righteous guy. It doesn't, doesn't work. The one who came up with this idea was actually a very good scholar, but he was a loner in that he had his own thing going. He didn't come from a particular um, following of anything. He just come up with a lot of stuff on his own. He was an expert in his studies in Hadith. He was a, one of the best muhaddith in the last century. He died in September of 1999, and if you see a picture of him, you look at me, you look at him, you say he must come from the same family, very much alike. His name was Sheikh Nasruddin al-Albani. He did some wonderful things. MashaAllah, we make dua for him. Well, this is a mistake, and I make more mistakes, really, than anybody. So it's not that, but the mistake was to say that we need to have a group to call ourselves by, to distinguish ourselves from the people of Ahl Bida. Well, the Ahl Bida means people of innovation. So we'll call ourselves on the same menhaj or methodology of the Salaf Asali. That's what he was saying. We are on the methodology of the righteous predecessors. That's what he's trying to say. But the people turned it into a group. 
and use that to justify whatever they did. It's not acceptable. That is not acceptable, and he would never have endorsed it because his own students have told me themselves they didn't endorse it. Muhammad Jabali, uh, Bin Uthaymin, you can go and talk to them in Saudi Arabia yourself, see them or talk to their students at least, and ask them, and they will say, no, 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 not what's going on. This is not what we meant, not like this. Not going in and pointing at people, calling them kafir, and labeling all the uh, leaders and things like that. That is That was never intended. The next thing, you didn't ask this one, but the people say Wahhabi. Catch yourself before you say that. Stop yourself. The other word I told you is the Arabic word, so is this. It means to bestow, to give. Al-Wahhab, if you say Al-Wahhab, you must be very careful now. You just said Allah's name. Allah is Al-Wahhab. He is the bestower, the ultimate bestower. So you don't take Allah's name and play with it like that. What really happened over 200 years ago, there was a student of knowledge who memorized the Quran when he was not even a teenager yet. He studied all of the fiqh, jurisprudence of the Hanafi. Then he began to study others. And his father, who was a scholar, told him to stop. Just stay with what we have. He said, I want to learn the others. His father almost disowned him because of it. It was very upsetting. You know, don't do that. But he wanted to learn all of it so he could understand. And he began to learn quite a bit. He became convinced that he needed to learn more. And he discovered through this learning that the people of his time were making a grave mistake. I use the right word too, because they were worshiping at graves. They were literally going to graves and calling upon dead people to help them. Righteous people, good people, but they're dead. And even if they were alive, what could they do? We could only make dua for you. Nobody's got any magic. You ask Allah to solve these impossible situations and he can do it. And that's what he was telling the people. And some of those who were making money or getting good position in the community out of these grave worshiping deals took exception to his group because they came in and kicked over all of these monuments on these graves. And of course they had no evidence to support what they did, so instead of dealing with the rationale of why don't you look at what you're doing is wrong, instead they labeled his followers as Wahhabi. Why? Because they couldn't call him by his real name, his name was Muhammad, and they would have had to say they're Mohammedans. <laughs> and you no know, Muslim would do that anyway. So they call him Wahhabi because his father was, Al, uh, was Abdul Wahhab. So he was Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, and he wrote a book called Kitab al-Iman. The book, if you read it and take the cover off and you don't know who wrote it, you'll say, this is a great book. Uh, it's very good about the belief in Allah is one and the teachings that come with it. It's kind of like a workbook. It just has a few verses or something and then tells you to go look up the rest of it. And it was given to some scholars who were attacking and saying, these Wahhabi people, so and so on. So what do you think about Kitab al-Iman? This is a bad book, don't read it. It's read. Okay. So they gave him the book without the cover on it. Didn't tell him. This is a scholar. I'm not going to tell you who. Big scholar. Current. He read it and he loved it. He said, this is the aqidah of a real Muslim. The belief system of a real Muslim. And when they said, well, here's the cover for the book. And he went... Huh? And he said, Astaghfirullah, I made a mistake. Big mistake. All of us need to understand that whenever somebody doesn't want to admit their mistake, it's a lot easier to point and say, he's a Wahhabi. They're so and so. They're such and such. Rather than admit what, and we're going to go back and look again at what we said in our speech. The king has no clothes. Ooh. All of us make mistakes. Just admit it. What is the big deal? Only Allah is free of mistakes.